Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we are taking an underwater look at how to catch bass on plastic worms. Plastic worms come in all shapes and sizes from the smallest of offerings up to giant curly tailed worms and everywhere in between. But one thing that remains universal across all of them is that plastic worms just plain catch fish. It's incredible in almost every circumstance across the entire globe, a plastic worm catches fish. It's amazing for targeting bass. So today what we're going to do is we're going to head underwater and get a first hand look at a variety of different plastic worms. And I'm going to give you some tips along the way because if you are a new bass fisherman or maybe you're somebody who has quite the skill set, you've been doing this for a long time, but you just want to catch more fish, we can cut years off of your learning curve by heading underwater. So today I've got a few different styles of worm to talk about. And I'm going, to, I'm going to give you some tips on how to work each one of them. The first one up in this plastic worm category is the Ned Worm or the Ned Rig. Typically a Ned Worm is a very small three to four inch straight tailed plastic. At least that's how the category started. There are all sorts of offerings now, but a very small worm on a very lightweight head with an exposed hook fished on the bottom. Now the theme today across all of these different baits, and I'm going to emphasize this over and over for you again, is to work your baits slower. If you are new to bass fishing and you want to catch fish, fish a plastic worm and fish it very slowly. A lot of people get caught up wanting to move the baits. And quite frankly, to our eyes as anglers, a fast moving bait, if you're hopping a Ned Rig, it looks great. But it looks great to you, not necessarily to the bass. Bass love that bait to just sit there. A little bit of movement, you can hop them, but after you do that, you want to let them sit. That pause, that time where it's just sitting after movement, that is when the vast majority of bass will strike that worm. So if you're not putting a pause in there, if you're overworking your baits, you're making a huge mistake. Now the Ned Rig in particular is a bait that can be worked so subtly, just bumped along the bottom and then left to sit. Now that's not to say you can't hop them once in a while to try and get a fish's attention and draw them in, especially in clear water. But the key is to let that bait just sit and that's when those fish will vacuum it up. The next one I want to talk about is a drop shot. And here I set one up for you. A drop shot is a method of taking a small plastic worm and suspending it. So here's the weight that's sitting on the bottom. The worm is eight to 12 inches up the line, suspended in the water. Now I like to nose hook them personally, unless I just absolutely can't because of the conditions, there's too much grass or something. I will nose hook every chance I get because it allows me to go to a very, very lightweight hook. Now this particular hook is an owner mosquito light and that is my favorite drop shot hook. The reason why is because it is made of such a light wire material. As a result, when I'm working that drop shot, again, it's all about letting that bait sit. I see way too many people shaking a drop shot hard and that's all they do. Shake, 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 shake. It's okay to shake a worm, but you need to let it pause. So one of my favorite things, because that hook is so lightweight, when I shake that worm and it gets good movement and then I stop, it almost suspends as it turns and then starts back to the bottom. And with this lightweight hook, it's a much slower fall back to bottom than you would get with a heavier weight hook or a big Texas rig hook. So that little nose hook gets me way more bites. 
Again, if you just want to catch fish this year, a Ned rig and a drop shot will get you an incredible number of bites. And you may catch an absolute giant doing it as well. But the key here is slow. It's not no movement. I'm not saying just hold a, a drop shot steady in the water, just suspend it up there doing nothing. Work it, but then stop. Let that bait do its slow fall. Because those fish will come up to that movement and then when that thing stalls out, that's when they suck it in. That is the key. Next up is the shaky head worm. A shaky head is a jig head with weight on it but we do a text posed rig so that it's weedless. If you're not familiar with the shaky head or any of these other baits, by the way, in the video description, I will link you the exact head, hook, weight, etc. for each one of these, as well as my favorite worms for each category. So those links will take you to Tackle Warehouse where you can see the exact bait. So if you're trying to see that head and it's too far away, you can click that link, it'll take you straight to a big picture of that head. But a shaky head paired with a straight tail worm will get bit year round. And it tends to get a little bit bigger bite than say a Ned Rig because it is a significantly bigger worm. Now rigged this way, it's also weedless. I can run my finger across here and I don't catch that hook point. Now, if I push down, it sticks me every time. So this can be fished more around grass, wood, debris. They're great for fishing around docks because you never know what sort of junk is gonna be up under a dock. It's a great option around cover, but it can also be fished completely out in the open. Now the name shaky head is a little misleading. Obviously it sounds like you're going to shake that head. You can, you can shake them, but make sure you stop and let that bait sit. Again, the majority of the bites will come once it's stopped. Now, sometimes I can get an aggressive reaction by popping the bait, but again, it'll jump and it's when it's falling back to bottom that they grab it. But you can also take a shaky head and just pull it and let it sit. Pull it and let it sit. And those fish will come and inspect it and suck that bait up. That's a great option for all sorts of different conditions. Last one here, actually second to last one here. This is the Senko. Probably the most universal bass fishing bait of all time. The Senko gets bit. Now you can rig it a variety of ways. The two most common are a wacky rig like this, where you take a hook, a smaller hook, and you stab that worm right in half with a no weight of any kind. You throw it out and you just let it fall. And when you do that, the two ends have a shimmy to them on its way down. Now it's subtle, it's very subtle, but those ends will be kicking in the water and those fish will just swim up and bite it. Now when it gets to bottom, you can hop it up and then stop and let it do its fall Again, again, almost all the bites will come on that slow fall to bottom the first time or back to bottom after you hop it up. Now you can also Texas rig it so that it becomes weedless and it can be fished around grass, fished over grass, through grass. Some people will even weight them, but the vast majority of the time, I'm going to wacky rig if I can, but if I can't, I will Texas rig it by far the best way to fish that setup. Now, last but not least, this goes out to the pond guy, the guy on the shore, the guy fishing around grass, because a lot of people will say, yeah, I wish I could fish a plastic worm, but my lake, my pond, my creek is completely chock full of grass, so I can't throw a worm. Well, that's simply not true. This is a Texas rigged worm. What that is, is a wide gap hook. Hopefully you can see that wide gap hook. And then I go through the bait and I text pose it on the back, which means I just barely poke it back into the back. And then I have a small weight sliding on the line up above. 
Hopefully you can see that weight there. That Texas rig is weedless. It can be fished in grass. Now, there's two ways to go, two trains of thought around grass. One is to use a really heavy weight, much larger than this, and punch a hole through the grass and go all the way to the bottom. And that will work. That will catch some really big fish. But for the guy who's on the bank, the guy who's in a pond, the guy who's just completely overgrown, those lakes where you get there and this far under the surface, there's grass forever. There's a trick for you. And that trick is to take a very small weight, even smaller than this one, either an eighth ounce, or now most of the tungsten companies are even making a 16th ounce. And I will link that for you, that 16th ounce. That's key. If you take a 16th ounce and put it on a weedless rigged worm or creature bait, this does not have to be a worm, it's just all about that Texas rig, and you throw that guy out there, you can fish it slow and methodically, and it will actually stay on top of the grass. It will never sink through. Now to you as the angler, that might sound weird. Why would I fish a worm way up in the air on top of the grass? Well, not the air, right? Way up in the water on top of the grass. But you don't realize the amount of worms, bugs, crawfish, and everything else that is crawling up on that grass. Those grass beds are alive. There's so much going on in there. So it's completely natural for your worm to be crawling and moving across and through the top of that grass. And those fish will come up in there and pick it off. You can also use a Texas rig where you've just got thin grass along the bottom. Sometimes that's called sand grass. Sometimes just a thin layer of moss right along the bottom. That's another great option, this or the shaky head, for fishing through that really sparse grass. But again, guys, if you could only have one bait to go out and catch a fish on any lake, anywhere, it's a plastic worm. They come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. So again, in the description, I'll link you our favorites for each one of these categories. Okay, maybe one or two of our favorite worms for each one, as well as our favorite colors, so that you can go out and fish with confidence. I'll link some of the rods and reels we use as well, but get out there. Do not be afraid to go bass fishing. You can catch these fish. You can do it with inexpensive baits, and the key is moving that bait slowly and giving it those long pauses. Let that bait sit, sit, let it settle to bottom, and that's when those bass will come up and slurp that bait up. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.